Hi friends, David here from Above AVL and Learn Christmas Lighting. And in this video is for you, um, because what we're gonna cover is if you're just starting out, like you got interested in this Christmas lighting hobby, this holiday light show thing, and you're like, okay, I found out there's this program called X Lights. I open it, I have no idea what to do. This video is going to help you do that. So what we're gonna do here is just walk through in a really quick manner some of the basic things you need to do to get started with x -Lights. This isn't an end-all be-all guide and we're not gonna cover every detail, just some of the most critical ones in order for you to get started and get learning how to use x -Lights. Then, if you're thinking about putting a display together, whether it's early in the season when you watch this, in the middle or even December, uh, the Learn Christmas Lighting Academy is your place to get A to Z complete course that steps through everything you need to do, not only on the X lights and programming side, but on the practical side of like, what kind of lights do I buy? Where do I find them? How do I find these prop things? What does this all mean? How does it work? How do I make it work? All of that is covered there from, you know, networking, everything. Okay, so you definitely want to hop in on that if you're intrigued as well. When you open X lights for the very first time, uh, what you're gonna see is not this screen. You're gonna see a pop-up that comes up and I, I can't simulate it here because I already have X lights on this computer, um, but you get a pop-up and it says, hey, you don't have a show folder, you need to choose one. Okay, so this is where you're gonna go ahead and create a new folder in uh, typically your documents folder. Some people will do it in a Dropbox or a Google Drive, which generally does work fine. If you're syncing to multiple computers, do not open the same setup on two computers at the same time. You will cause yourself infinite problems. But you'll create this folder and you know name it X Lights and that's good to go. And then you'll end up on this screen. Okay, so this is a complete X Lights file. So the folder that you created is essentially a show file as we'd call it. It contains not only is it gonna contain your layout and how things set up on, on your home, but it's also going to contain all of your sequences, which are the programming for the lights with various music or not music if that's the kind of show you're running. To get started, you end up first on this controllers tab. When you're first starting out, the number one thing that you're gonna do with the controllers tab is nothing. Don't do anything here. Um, there's no need to do anything here until you have physical stuff, you're hooking it up and you're getting started. So we're gonna skip that. Next we have the layout tab. So the layout tab is completely blank in this case. And this is where you can build your house's layout. There are 2D and 3D options. We're gonna stick in the 2D today because ultimately 3D is just more complex. And it's not necessary for people unless you have significant depth to your, your property. When you do have a lot of depth, that's when 3D can make a lot more sense or if you're doing things, props that are in 3D. But when you have a lot of depth, a lot of times there's props in front of other props in front of other props and the 2D view doesn't do a great job of that. First thing you wanna do is go right here to background image and go grab a front image, a nice flat front image of your house. Pro tip, if you're taking, for example, a phone photo, uh, I'm just gonna pull in the Google Street View one right now. But if you take a phone photo, keep your zoom in 1x, okay? Don't go to wide angle, just you know, walk further away, keep it in 1x, that's gonna help things uh, render a little bit more accurately, gonna help your layout to be a little more accurate. Okay, so we just go here to background image, hit this three dots, and then you're gonna go find an image of your home. So in this case, I'm gonna go all the way into my documents, into my actual X Lights folder, and voila, I selected it. Now I've got it as my background. It's fairly accurate-ish, though I definitely will retake this for next year because um, we're getting rid of the hedges <laughs> and that tree's been long gone. Uh, but overall, it's not bad, it's pretty accurate. This definitely has a little bit of a wide angle to it. So things at the front are kind of out of scale from things in the back but it'll work. So next thing we wanna do is take the brightness control and it's usually at 100%, kick it way down, you know, whatever you wanna do that you can still kinda of see your house. Then we're gonna start laying out the props that we're gonna use on our house. Now, the beautiful thing about X lights and the way it works is you don't have to get this 100% accurate from day one. You can add stuff later, uh, you can remove stuff, you can change stuff. 
And generally, if you program it well, it's pretty easy to translate things over, especially when you use groups, but more on that later. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just build some basic stuff. So I'm gonna grab like my mega tree because I have one of those in my house. It's over here, right? I'm gonna go ahead and grab maybe some icicles. Then um, in this world, um, you know, things, your regular computer shortcuts like copying and pasting totally work. So I just copied and pasted an icicle. We'll stick it over there. We're just going to leave it. When you're first modeling things out, especially just to learn and to start testing, it's really not critical to have all the numbers right. And what I mean by that is, for example, I just dragged out these icicles, right? And they have a pattern of three, four, five, four. So that's the number of lights vertically um, in them. And the number of lights total is, is spelled out there as well. It's not all that important to get this precise at the first step. You can actually sit here and program your show and then go back in later and actually change the amount of lights in these various props. And it's going to be totally fine. It's amazing. Uh, so, you know, this tree, you know, for example, is a 360 degree tree. You know, mine's going to be an 180 because that's what I do. And then you know, this is 16 strings of 50 lights. Uh, you know, mine's different, but you can change that later and everything will adapt once you re-render it all. So not, not a huge deal there. Okay, so you go ahead and drag things out. Like I'll drag out some window frames, right? Again, the quantity of lights in it does not matter at all at this point. And then, you know, just move some stuff around. Whoops. I'm gonna click off of this. That allows me to select and work with a model that I have. And you know, get things roughly in place. Give yourself a good starting point to begin. Okay, so the other thing we have besides kind of these generic models, so these generic models, you know, things like the trees and the matrix and the, the, the single line, the polyline, you know, spheres, all of these are kind of generic things that, that work really well with generic props, right? Like things like mega trees and window outlines and matrices and even mini trees that you buy from various vendors will utilize these models. Um, but there's gonna be things you buy in this hobby, core, usually the Coro props that are made out of a corrugated plastic. And those ones are really custom, right? They, they model out a completely different way. So in that case, we'll go create new download typically or import if your vendor sent you a model or has it on their website. But download has a lot of them. And so you just drag it out. It takes a minute the first time to download everything. And then you go ahead and you find the prop that you're working with. So say we just have this decor chroma hat with matrix and you hit insert model. Um, anytime you see import aliases, you generally want to say yes. And then you can go put this wherever, <laughs> wherever you want as it goes in your show, scale it semi-appropriately and you'll be good to go. Next thing you want to do here is just hit save. Okay. And then we're going to go and start programming on this layout. Just do some very basic sequencing, or, or, which is the programming here in X-Lights. So we go to the sequencer tab and we're gonna go ahead and create a new sequence, okay? You have the ability to do musical or animation. If you do musical, it will prompt you right away to go find some music. And so in this case, I'm just gonna go, I, I close that one out and instead I'm just gonna go create an animation. Now there's a billion opinions about which button to press here. You know, it tells you a little bit here at the bottom. I would say uh, as things get more dense and more HD in people's shows uh, here and into the future, going with 40 frames per second is probably a good idea. And that's different than what I've done historically, different than what I've recommended historically, but with really dense things, with singing faces, um, that higher frames per second does look better. Okay, then we'll go ahead and hit quick start. Okay, it's gonna bug me about uh, the music again. And then it's going to start, now it started the same as if I clicked animation. Now here I've got a really simple layout. So there's a couple of things I want to show you here. Uh, we essentially get a timeline where our music would be at the top here if we had music. And then all of our different models that we created, the different items on our house, all show up down below here. 
Okay. And then we have all the effects up here. So if I go ahead and I drag an effect, like just simply we'll drag an on effect onto this chroma hat. Okay. Then it's going to turn on. Now we have two previews here by default on the side and I'm going to drag them over to make it uh, much larger. Here we have the whole house preview and here we have just the individual model preview. Okay. So when we drag effects, onto these, it's going to show up. We can change colors just by selecting or deselecting colors and begin to work with our effects that way. Now, this is a good place to talk about groups, okay? And again, as I mentioned, this is not an exhaustive guide. This is a quick start, and we have the full exhaustive guide to your full display inside of our academy. You definitely want to check that out below. Okay, um, but as I mentioned, we should talk about groups here. So groups allow you to have multiple props together, say all your window frames, say your whole house, everything, and be able to play an effect together on all of the items as if they are one. Okay, this is something you'll do a lot. So listen up. We go to the layout tab. There's many ways to create groups, but simply selecting the items, hitting right-clicking, then hitting create group from selections, give it a name, and now we've got that group. If we need to adjust that group, it's as simple as coming down to this bottom window and taking either these models and using selecting them using the arrow to kick them out, or taking these models, digging the arrows, kicking them in. Okay, you can change groups at any time and working with groups means that you can constantly modify things, you can add, delete, get rid of things in your layout and anything sequenced or anything programmed to a group keeps on working with the new stuff. So we'll go ahead really quick and just grab everything, create group from selections, all. And so now we've got a couple groups, okay? If we go back to our sequencer for a sequence we already created, we'll notice the groups actually didn't show up. And this is like a really common question, so it's a good idea to hit it here. If I built a new sequence, they would totally show up, but because this was existing, we just need to right click on one of our models here in this, this right bar, hit edit display elements, and then we see our available options right here. We can highlight them all and then use the arrow to kick them over. Next, we're gonna order them. There's a lot to be said about the order up and down of things uh, in your layout. And you know, it's, you could write a book on it, but in general, oops. In general, you want bigger things, you know, groups like all and, and uh, groups that contain multiple items to be near the top and smaller things, single models, smaller groups to be at the bottom. Again, not the end all be all. And sometimes there's times where you might want to do something different, but in general, that's a good piece of advice. Now we've got, as you can see, our groups here and we can begin to sequence with them. So again, not the end all be all of sequencing, but right clicking and hitting add timing track, then you can do seconds or you can do ones that um, are metronomes or based on music, all of those available in here. And then you can hit create and it creates it. You do need to have the QM vamp plugins installed for that to happen. So uh, look at the download page. It will tell you how to get those, how those work. Okay. Uh, for X lights. But now bringing on new effects is really, really simple. So let's do, for example, a pinwheel. And you can see here just to demonstrate, I can make some adjustments to the sizes and shapes of things right here. Okay, so for example, the thickness, so it's really obvious, we'll make it nice and thick. And now you see this effect happening on this hat. If I go and I move this, I could just uh, control on windows and hit an arrow key to my windows, now you see it on the windows. And instead of individually, it's actually spread across both windows. Now you can get it to go individually. That will be a later conversation. Or put it on the all group, it happens across everything. And so sequencing in x lights, though this is you know an incredibly simplified version, is as simple as choosing effects, dragging them into place on uh, your layout, on your sequence here, and then bring in more effects and, you know, just trying different things, adding them together, seeing how they work. Now, there's a lot more you can do here. For example, you can go ahead and you can insert layers. 
so you can have multiple layers of effects on top of each other. Again, this is a very simple quick start guide, so we're not gonna dive into that here, but I got two things for you as we wrap up, okay? Uh, number one, as we mentioned, the Academy is the place to really get going, but if you're like brand, brand new to this, we wanna send you some info, so head over to learnchristmaslighting.com, we're going to send you the four things. I think it's four things. I really wish I knew before I began on this hobby. It's going to save you time. It's going to save you money. It's going to save you frustration. So go get that guide. You really want that. Number two is um, if you're looking to purchase stuff and you know what you need, uh, say you've gone through our academy already. Actually, number two is the academy. Um, that's the A to Z step-by-step -step guide to everything plus our community forums where you ask a question and you're going to get one consistent, succinct answer. You're not going to get a billion different answers that don't work together. You're going to get one answer that works for your display from experts, including myself. Number three is uh, when you do need to purchase lights, head over to us at aboveavl.com. We're a full-on audio, video, and lighting vendor, but we have a lot of holiday stuff. And so um, we're, we love to help just go to our holiday lighting page and you'll see all of the pixels and extensions and, and all that other stuff that you need to make your display happen. We've got it all, and we want to help you get it in your hands. Um, one of the things we do, just if you're new here, is we don't do sales. We just give you great prices every day. So that's our, that's our pitch. That's our spiel. I hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you guys in our next video where we're going to talk about importing a sequence. Thanks.